Hello, Kiwaden. My name is Chelsea Branch. I am a wife and a mom of four awesome kids. My oldest is a current little husky. I will have two new little huskies next year, and then my youngest is a baby, so she'll be a little husky eventually. I am also a doctor of pharmacy, and I work as the clinical manager for the inpatient pharmacy at McLaren Port Huron, so one of our hospitals here in town. And what I get to do with that is I get to help make sure that you are staying safe when you're in the hospital and making sure that you're getting the right medications at the right doses to help you get better. And today, I have the opportunity of reading to you Chapter 7 from our all-school book, A Boy Called Bat. So, jumping right into chapter 7, every other Fridays. The next morning was an every other Friday. On every other Fridays, Mom drove back to his school, and Janie walked to her school, just like usual. But in the afternoon, Dad would pick them up. First Bat, whose class let out 20 minutes before Janie's, and they would all go home to his apartment for the weekend. Every other Fridays made Bat uncomfortable, like his skin was on too tight. Pat liked it when things followed a pattern, and every other Fridays broke the pattern. This every other Friday was the worst one Bat had ever experienced, because it meant that it would be three days until he saw the skunk kid again. He had begged Mom to let him take the skunk to Dad's house, but Mom refused. The baby skunk needs to be with me, she said. I'll take him to work, and the vet techs can watch him while I'm with patients. Besides, Bat, I don't think your dad is a fan of skunks. Bat even tried pretending to be sick so that he could stay home instead of going to school. He told Mom that he had a sore throat and achy ears. Bat hardly ever lied. It made him feel itchy. But even though Mom's patients were animals rather than humans, she was still kind of a doctor. She shined a light into his ears and made him say, Ah! As she looked down his throat, you're not sick, Bat, she said. You just want to stay with the skunk kit. He needs me, Bat whined. Bat, Mom warned. Don't let yourself get all worked up, okay? Sorry, sorry, said Bat. We can help raise the kit this month as a family, as long as you keep on doing all the regular stuff too. School and dads and homework and everything. If the skunk kit is too big of a distraction, then I can get Lawrence to watch him home in the evenings. Lawrence was Bat's favorite vet tech at Mom's clinic. He could juggle five juggling clubs, and even though he had enormous hands, big enough to hold all five clubs at once, he was gentle. He had the deepest voice Bat had ever heard, deep like space. But no matter how much Bat liked Lawrence, there was no way he was going to let him take the kit home after work. My throat feels better, he said. Much better. Mom and Janie and Bat all left the house together. Mom locked the door behind them. She kissed Janie and said, Look both ways. Have a fun weekend. Okay, Mom, Janie said. See you on Monday. Bat climbed into the back seat of the car and fastened his seatbelt. He liked to sit in the middle seat because someone had once told him that it was the safest seat in the whole car. That was one of the things he didn't like about every other Fridays. His dad's car, a fast little yellow convertible, didn't have a middle back seat. It just had two side back seats with a hump in between. Mom placed the box with the skunk kit on the front passenger seat. Then she started the car <clears throat> and backed down the driveway. It wasn't a long drive to bat school. The distance from their house to his school was exactly 2.3 miles. Bat knew this because he liked his mother to push the button on the dashboard every morning, the one that reset the trip meter. Bat spent the entire 2.3 miles trying to come up with a reason why he shouldn't go to Dad's, even though it was an every other Friday a reason that wouldn't make his mom give the kit to Lawrence. But he couldn't think of anything. They arrived at his school. You'll take care of the kit? Bat asked mom. Honey, mom said. I'm a veterinarian. Taking care of animals is my job. I promise. Bat nodded. He unbuckled his seatbelt, slid across the back seat, and got out of the car. 
Wait a minute, Mom called after him through her rolled-down window. Aren't you forgetting something? He had his backpack. He had his lunch. He had his earmuffs. No, he said. Mom smiled. You forgot to kiss me goodbye. Oh, yeah, said Bat. He walked back over to the car and stuck his head down through Mom's window. She wrapped her arms around his neck and pulled him close. Her wavy brown hair tickled his nose. Goodbye, little Bat, she said. I'll miss you. Then she kissed his cheek. Goodbye, Bat answered. He walked up to the school's front door, then turned around. Mom was still there, in her car, watching him. She, he raised his hand and waved. Mom honked the horn at him. Three little happy honks, and then she drove away.